a horrifying accident, now an infamous tragedy with a haunting ending. The Titanic's captain uttered something rather ominous before the ship went down. When the Titanic struck an iceberg just after 11.30 p.m. on April 14, 1912, the impact felt like little more than a slight jarring to those aboard. Below deck, it was another story. The luxury passenger liner, which was the jewel of the British White Star Line helmed by Captain Edward John Smith, was on its maiden voyage from Southampton, England to New York City when the partially submerged mountain of ice tore into the ship's hull about 400 miles south of Newfoundland, Canada. Thomas Andrews, Titanic's head designer, went below to assess the damage, and what he saw floored him. He ran to tell Captain Smith that seawater was pouring into the boiler room near the ship's bow as well as in the room next door because the iceberg punched through six watertight compartments. Captain Smith immediately understood this meant that the Titanic was doomed. Andrews believed that they had only 60 to 90 minutes before the ship would sink, so Smith began evacuating his ship. The crew members rounded up the women and children first, corralled them into the lifeboats, and prioritized first-class passengers. The captain, meanwhile, ordered the crew to send out distress signals and fire rockets. He still held out hope of rescue even as the lifeboats below hit the icy water. Captain Edward Smith, born on January 27, 1850, was a seasoned sailor who began his naval career as a teenager. He had been with the White Star Line for nearly 40 years. His crew respected him, and he was beloved by passengers, especially the ones in first class, even earning the title the Millionaire's Captain per Britannica. While the Titanic disaster was by far his worst accident at sea, it wasn't his first. On more than one occasion, his ships had run aground, and on September 20, 1911, Smith was captain of the White Star Passenger Liner Olympic when it collided with the Royal Navy Cruiser Hawk near the Isle of Wight in the English Channel, causing extensive damage to both ships. The Royal Navy blamed the Olympic for the accident, and the ensuing legal defense, as well as repairs, were financially hard on the company. White Star backed their captain, who would contend that his record at sea was unblemished. According to Encyclopedia Titanica, Smith said, when anyone asks me how I can best describe my experience in nearly 40 years at sea, I merely say, uneventful. In all my experience, I've never been in any accident or any sort worth speaking about. However, as the clock ticked into the early morning hours of April 15, 1912, Smith must have realized that his tenure as a ship's captain was coming to an end. Right ahead. While the Titanic continued to sink, the wireless operators stayed at their stations, desperately trying to send out distress messages over their radio transmitters and any hope of rescue. Just after 2 a.m., Captain Smith came in and relieved them of their duties so they could attempt to save themselves. Below deck, the engineers stayed at their posts, attempting to pump the water out, which helped ensure the power stayed on for as long as possible. Even the ship's musicians stayed at their posts, playing music to calm the wildly panicked passengers. With no help left, Captain Smith apparently told his crew for the mirror, Well, boys, you've done your duty and done it well. I ask no more of you. I release you. You know the rule of the sea. It's every man for himself now, and God bless you. What happened next remains clouded in myth and mystery. Various sources allege that a rush of water swept Smith overboard, that he died by suicide, or that he jumped from the deck with a child in his arms whom he placed in one of the lifeboats. The version most historians seem to agree with comes from an eyewitness. Harold Bride, the surviving wireless operator, said that Smith dove into the sea from the bridge per history. Smith, along with nearly 700 of the ship's crew members, died. 